If you are watching this in 2026 and thinking about getting your CompTIA a certification, you have probably heard the same thing I hear from students constantly. Isn't AI making this obsolete? Or won't I just fail like everyone else? Let's look at what the data actually says. Right now, there are over 450,000 active tech job listings, 50,000 help desk positions open annually, and a remains the number one most mentioned certification on LinkedIn. It is mentioned more than cloud certifications and more than cloud security. Entry-level pay is averaging around $57,000 a year, but if you are a certified, you're looking at a median of $63,000 across the field. And here's the thing nobody talks about. 20 to 30% of test takers fail on their first attempt. That means if you get it right the first time, you're automatically in the top tier. That is a massive competitive advantage. But here's why most people don't make it. They don't know what changed between the old 1100 series exam and the new 1200 series exam that launched in March of 2025. They're wasting study time on Windows 10 when the exam is all Windows 11. They're not doing hands-on labs and they're watching videos instead of testing themselves. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what the 2026 a exam tests, what is tripping people up, and the study method that gets 89% pass rates on the first attempt. Let's address the elephant in the room, artificial intelligence. Yes, thousands of job listings now mention AI skills, but here's what CompTIA did in response. They added AI fundamentals directly into the a exam. So rather than making a obsolete, AI made it more relevant. I want you to really think about this. Every single AI system running in a data center, every cloud server running language models, every edge device running inference, it all runs on hardware. That hardware needs someone to install it, configure it, and troubleshoot it when it fails. That person is you. That is a CompTIA a technician. The Bureau of Labor Statistics projects 11% job growth in IT through 2029. That's growth, not replacement. So let's do the math. A $239 exam fee plus about 120 hours of study gives you entry to a career ladder that starts at $50,000 and can hit six figures if you stack your certifications. That is an ROI that beats almost any degree. But the catch is, you have to pass. So let's make sure you're in the 70% who do. Here's something critical. If you're studying from materials made before March 2025, you're preparing for the wrong exam. The new 1200 series is what you'll be taking today. So what actually changed? Top change number one, Windows 11 is no longer optional. It is required. In the old series, you could pass with solid Windows 10 knowledge. Not anymore. The new exam specifically tests TPM 2.0 requirements. That stands for Trusted Platform Module. It tests UEFI boot instead of BIOS, and it expects you to know the differences between Windows 11 Home, Pro, and Enterprise editions. You also need to know about zero-touch deployment. That means deploying 500 computers without physically touching them. Real IT environments are moving to Windows 11, and the exam reflects that reality. Top change number two, AI hardware and the NPU. An NPU is a neural processing unit. This is brand new to the 1200 series. You'll find these in modern processors like the Intel Core Ultra or AMD Ryzen 8040. Why should you care? Because the exam now asks what an NPU does. It handles operations for AI inference 10 to 100 times faster than a general CPU. Technicians who understand this are more valuable, not less. Top change number three, enhanced cybersecurity. The security domain on Core 2 jumped to 28% of the exam. New topics include zero trust architecture, which is the idea that every single access request needs verification. It also covers PAM, or Privileged Access Management. 
Top change number four, new wireless and file systems. Core One now explicitly tests the 6 GHz frequency band for Wi-Fi 6E. Core 2 now includes REFS, that's REFS, the resilient file system for enterprise storage, and XFS for Linux environments. None of these are conceptually hard, but they are new, and if your study guide is outdated, you won't see them. So how do you actually study for this? First, let's set expectations. If you have no IT background, expect to spend about 150 hours total across both exams. If you see people claiming they passed in four weeks while working full-time with no experience, be skeptical. Now, let's talk about the learning method. This is where most students fail. There are two ways to study. Passive learning, which is just watching videos, and active recall, which is testing yourself. Science shows that passive watching only retains about 29% of the material. Active recall retains 57%. That's nearly double the retention in the same amount of time. Here is what successful students do. Watch a 30-minute video on Windows troubleshooting. Then, close the video. Write down everything you remember. Then, drill it. Now, you could spend 20 hours making your own flashcards, or you can use a pre-made active recall system. In our Tech Vault Mastery Bundle, we have already built over 500 digital flashcards for you that target the exact ports, protocols, and commands you need. Don't waste time typing cards. Spend your time drilling them. The mistake students make is re-watching videos because it feels productive. They avoid testing themselves because it feels like failing. But the failing is the learning happening. Next, we have to talk about the performance-based questions, or PBQs. These are interactive simulations where you fix problems in a virtual environment. You will see three to six of them per exam. Here is the strategy that saves your score. Do not start with the PBQs. Even though they appear first, skip them. Complete all the multiple choice questions first, then return to the PBQs with your remaining time. If you waste 20 minutes on the first simulation, you run out of time for the easy multiple choice points. You also need to see these simulations before exam day. Reading about a printer jam is different from fixing one. We have a dedicated PBQ walkthrough series included in the Tech Vault ecosystem that breaks down the exact printer and network config scenarios you are likely to see. Now, let's look at why people fail Core 2 specifically. CompTIA set a higher passing score for Core 2 compared to Core 1. That alone tells you it is harder. A major trap is command line confusion. On the 1202 exam, you will be tested on Windows command line tools like ipconfig, netstat, ping, and traceroute. Here's what trips people up. You watch a video where the instructor types ipconfig. You think, okay, I know that. But the exam question asks, a user can access a website but experiences two-second latency spikes. The user can ping the gateway. Which tool would you use to diagnose routing delays? The answer is Traceroute, or T-R-A-C-E-R. -E Students miss this because they know the commands, but they don't know when to use them. They forget that ipconfig does not show routing delays. You need Traceroute for that. The exam tests troubleshooting methodology. Ping is for connectivity. Traceroute is for the path. Netstat is for processes. Another trap is insufficient hands-on practice. 67% of exam failures happen because test takers lacked practical experience. They read about Windows 11 installation, but never actually installed it. They read about RAID 6, but never configured an array. For practice exams, you need simulation mode. You need questions that give you immediate feedback on why you were wrong. We have just updated the Tech Vault question bank with over 130 new questions specific to the 1200 series, split into manageable sprints so you don't burn out. 
So here is your action plan starting January 2026. Month 1. Build your foundation. Watch the videos. Use our digital flashcards to drill your ports and protocols every single day. Month 2. Get your hands dirty. Do hands-on lab work. Configure Windows networking. Break things on purpose. Watch the PBQ walkthroughs so you aren't surprised on test day. Month 3. Exam Mastery. Take full-length practice exams, but do not just look at the score. For every question you miss, read the explanation to understand why the correct answer is right and why your answer was wrong. Finally, on exam day, in the first five minutes, do a brain dump. Write down every port number and command you memorized on your scratch paper. This opens up mental space for the complex questions. Here's the bottom line. You are not competing against AI in 2026. You are competing against other candidates who also want this certification. 70 to 80% of them will pass on the first attempt. The others will fail and have to retake it, costing time and money. You now know the market. You know the exam changes and you know the traps. You have everything you need to be in the top tier. If you're ready to start, check the link in the description for the Tech Vault Mastery Bundles. It includes the videos, the summary notes, the interactive flashcards, and the new question bank all in one place. Comment below if you're planning to take A plus this year and let us know what your biggest fear is about the exam. We read the comments and want to see you succeed. You've got this. Now go study smart, not hard.